Sometimes it's useful, before you focus on the breath, to just scan through the body. Notice where there's any tension. You relax the tension. What you might do is, if you don't see clearly where the patterns of tension are, in other words, everything seems to be a mass of tension, try to compare different parts. Your left hand with your right hand, your left arm with your right arm. Which one is holding more tension? Then do the same with the rest of the body, from the feet on up to the head. Because it's hard to settle down in the body when things are tense. This is if your awareness is hard and the body is a hard object and they just don't go together. But if you can soften them both up, your awareness can penetrate the body and settle in. Because the concentration we're trying to develop here is a lot easier to keep going if it's based on relaxation rather than on straining and stressing. So you might start with your fingers, go up the arms, relax things. Some people have trouble seeing the different energies flowing in the body as breath energies. And there are some energies that are not really <coughs> directly related to the in and out breath. But they have that quality of movement, of flow. Sometimes the flow is spinning around in some parts of the body, other times it's flowing one way, sometimes it's flowing another way. And that's what they have in common with breath. When the Buddha talks about the different elements of the body, the breath element, the water, the fire element, the earth element, he's talking about how things feel from the inside. And in English we have a very poor vocabulary for describing those feelings. This is where the elements come in useful. The fact that you're sitting here in a body. When you have your eyes closed, how do you know there's a body here? Well, there are sensations. And it's good to be able to have a vocabulary to classify them. If there's heaviness, that's earth element or property. If there's coolness, it's water. Warmth is the fire. And the sense of energy. That's the breath. And the in and out breathing is just one aspect of that particular property. It's how you know that you're breathing. You have that sense of energy flow. And we're reacquainting ourselves with what it feels like to be in the body. Instead of looking at the body in the way that a scientist might try to define it into chemical elements or processes that can be measured from the outside, we're looking at things from the inside. Because this is where we're settling down. And if you can relax into the body, it makes it a lot easier to see these things, and then you can gain a sense of what's out of balance. Is it too much warmth or too little? If there's too much warmth, understand there's going to be a heat wave in the next couple of days. Try to think about the cool parts of the body. Where in the body is it coolest right now? And focus on that. And then think of that coolness spreading out. On days when it's cold, you can think of the warmth. When the body's feeling too heavy, think of the breath energy giving it an uplift. At other times, you have to think of the breath energy going down. And if too much energy goes into your head, you start getting a headache. That's when it's good to think as you breathe in that energy is flowing. And here, all you have to do is hold the perception in mind, the mental image in mind. You don't have to force anything. Just hold the image in mind that the energy can flow. And then it helps, it to, helps allow it to flow. And then as you bring in, <clears throat> breathe in, think of it going down. Down the arms, down the legs, out the hands, out the feet. If you have 
an old injury, you might notice there's a sense of tension around that. And think of the breath energy flowing right through it, loosening things up. And as things get loosened up inside, you can slip inside them. Your awareness is getting more sensitive. It gets softer in this way. And John Sawat often would talk about the, the paradox of the fact that when your energy gets very tender, it also gets very strong. In other words, you can slip into the body and you find that you gain strength from that. There's a certain solidity. And it's not the solidity of the body, but it's a certain solid unwavering quality to your awareness. It's both sensitive and strong, tender and solid. And you can induce that by relaxing into the body and allowing your awareness to get more and more sensitive to where little patterns of tension may be. If you don't immediately relate this to the in and out breath, that's okay. You can approach it from either side. Years back I was teaching a meditation retreat, and there was a woman whose background was in Tibetan meditation. And someone had invited her to do a Hinayana retreat. And so we're going over the, what they call the different recollections, and one of them is recollection of the body. Mindfulness immersed in the body. And I had people visualize the bones in the body, starting with the tips of the fingers and then working up the arms. And then starting with the tips of the toes and working up the legs, the torso, up to the head. And as you visualized each bone, try to gain a sense of where that bone was in your body. And if there was any tension in the muscles around it, then allow those to relax. And then work your way up. And to the end of the session, she burst out crying. She said she'd been working on concentration for years and had never had gotten the level of stillness she did simply by doing that exercise. So if you find that a understandable way of approaching how you're experiencing your body, well, try that. And as you notice, as things get more relaxed, the tension begins to unwind a bit, you will notice there is a relationship between the way you breathe in, breathe out, and also the flow of some of the energy in the body. So it's not like you're trying to force air into the solid body. But the body itself seems less and less solid. After all, it's made out of atoms that have a lot of space, a lot more space in the atoms actually than the actual matter. And the energy can flow very freely among these things. So you're not trying to force air into a cell, it's just allowing energy to flow around in an area where there are no clear boundary lines. A lot of this depends on the power of perception. Perception means the mental label you have for things. And if you carry in mind the perception that there are these impenetrable solid parts of the body, they're going to be impenetrable. Perception has a lot of power, especially over the way the energy flows in the body. If you hold in mind the image that things are open, energy can flow from one atom to the next to all over the place so there are no clear boundaries. That helps the energy to flow. You sense it. So play with your perceptions for a while. Deconstruct. This is called de-thinking or de-perception. Ask yourself, in these concepts you have of what's going on in the body, to what extent have you actually experienced these things, and to what extent are they ideas you've picked up from outside? And then see if you can use the Buddha's vocabulary of the elements or the properties. Properties is probably a better translation. to help make sense of the various sensations you've got in the body and how you can use them, how you can manipulate them at, to make the body an easier place to settle down. As you become more sensitive of the body, the sense of the body becomes more refined. 
And that's when they can interpenetrate, and that's how you settle down without having thing to push things together. You simply allow them to interpenetrate, and there they are. When they're there together, they give each other strength. John Lee's image is of a person in a house. The house protects you, and then you look after the house. If you're not in the house, animals can move in, all kinds of things can move in. Holes can develop in the roof, and you, nobody knows. The house begins to rot. Gets all dirty. But if you're in the house, you notice, okay, there's a leak here and there's something there. And so you work on keeping things clean, you keep everything repaired. Chase out all the animals. And both you and the house benefit. It's the same with the body and the mind. You make your awareness more sensitive so it can seep through the body. And you can loosen up your perceptions of the solidity of the body so the awareness can seep in even deeper. The mind has a good, solid place to stay, and the body has someone looking after it, so that its functions and processes go a lot more smoothly. It's good for the health of the body, good for the health of the mind.